you know, when Joyce would just say it, you know, how many of you, um, you know, know somebody that thinks they're always right? <laughs> you know, I was raising my hand, and I kind of left it up, because I, I am married to somebody that thinks he's always right. And I, and, um, I said to him, I said, you think you're always right? And he said, that's because I am. <laughs> So, and, and I didn't argue with him, because he has a right to have his opinion, <laughs> right? And I'm waiting for the day that I'm in the car with KC or maybe at home, and he says to me what Joyce said, Dave said to him, you know, I was wrong about that, and you were right. I'm like, yep, maybe one of these days, because I am a woman of faith, you know. <laughs> oh, man. God is so good, isn't he? But for real, that's what Casey said. So anyway, but he does listen to me. And we are a team. Yes. And I love my husband and I do respect him. And him and I do think differently. <laughs> and that, that's good. You know, that's good. So, how many of you are going to practice and apply the word that we heard tonight? Um, Strife is criticism, being judgmental, a sulky spirit. And um, I want to just read this um, in James 3 and expound on it just a little bit. Because this is something that is, like I said, it's a critical thing right now. And all of us need to examine our heart in it. Amen. Yeah. Because it's a spirit and it'll get a hold of you without you even realizing it. And um, I love how she pointed out that you can get offended, and if you let that offense fester, just like if you let a little splinter fester, and most of you have heard my story about me getting a splinter that was real little, and it didn't come out for a few days, and then it festered. And Jeremiah and KC were trying to get this splinter out. And it was so little that you, it was really fine and maybe you had to, you know, have a tweezer in that. And so they wanted to help me out. So they had me lay down on the couch and put my foot up on the edge, you know, with the arm. And I did. And then um, <laughs> they, um, I just, when they were attempting to do it, I kind of freaked out because when they touched my splinter and that fester, it hurt really bad. So I pulled so hard on my knee that I almost got my knee pulled out of joint. And I was like freaking out and going wild because that thing had festered. But anyway, they never let me forget it and it was ridiculous. <laughs> <laughs> but you know what? It's ridiculous what we let fester in us. Just something little. And sometimes it's something people don't even mean something that they say, but because you know, we're some way, we, we take it the wrong way, and then we um, let it fester, and then Joyce pointed out that, that when those offenses fester is when you get into strife. And I'm going to tell you what, it's deadly. It's deadly. James chapter 3. And 13 says, Who is wise and understanding among you? Let him show by good conduct that his works are done in the meekness of wisdom. But if you have bitter envy and self-seeking in your hearts, do not boast and lie against the truth. This wisdom does not descend from above, but is earthly, sensual, demonic. For where envy and self-seeking exist, confusion and every evil thing are there. Every evil thing. Yeah. And it also, um, here, the translation, it's rivalry. Rivalry is competition with no rules to govern it. Sensual 
That word means belonging to the natural or physical, unspiritual. It is living in the domain of the five senses, concerned with this life only. Being sensual is being in common with lust, illicit desires, and unclean practices that open a person to the demonic. Come on. And you know, we as Christians, we don't want to do that. But we do it without even realizing it when we get into strife. Amen. you got to guard against it. Galatians 5 and 16 admonishes, Walk in the Spirit, and you shall not fulfill the lust of the flesh. Verse 17 says, But the wisdom that is from above is first pure, then peaceable, gentle, willing to yield, full of mercy, and good fruits without partiality and without hypocrisy. Now the fruit of righteousness is sown in peace by those who make peace. Amen. Say, I'm a peacemaker. I'm a peacemaker. Avoiding strife, whenever God moves by his spirit, the efforts of the adversary will manifest in many ways in order to seek to stem the flow of divine grace. This text notes both envy and strife, their source and the impact they can make. Ultimately, the devilish source of both indicates satanic enterprise finding human cooperation. Pure workings of the spirit can quickly be soured if jealousy or anger is given a place. Confusion, disorder, commotion, instability will affect the life of a congregation, a team of workers, or an individual unless prayerful monitoring resists these evil seeds being sown and taking root. Only by the love of God and His Holy Spirit can we stop strife. Have I got anybody in here tonight that's willing to stop strife and not allow it? We're all different. I love how Grace pointed out, you know, because I'm guilty of it. You know, you want, you know, to put your likes or desires or you want to have a friend or you want somebody to just love and like everything that you do. Come on. You know, but like she said, not everybody's going to be that way. Right? And it's okay. But we're called to love everybody. It doesn't mean we have to like how everybody is, but we're called to love. Jesus even said, love your enemies. And do good to them that do spiteful things against you. And we can do this, church, because the Bible says that we can. And the love of God is shed abroad in our heart by the Holy Spirit. And I'm telling you, I don't want that in my life. I hate it. I hate it. I hate being offended. I hate letting that thing fester. I hate being in strife. It's like opening up the door where there's confusion in every evil work. How many of you got enlightened tonight? And there's some things that are just, you know, I'm going to destroy everything. And you will not be happy. You know, and like you said before, if you're not having fun serving Jesus, we're not doing it right. We're not doing it according to the word because Jesus said that he came to give us life to the full till it overflows more abundantly. Amen. That's what he wants for us. It is possible. He gives us his peace in the midst of the storms of life. Amen. I want to be a happy person all the time, which the happiness I want is the joy of the Lord, which is a spiritual force because world happiness depends on if everything goes right. And everything goes your way. And if it don't, then you're going to be all upset. But when you have the force of joy on the inside of you, and when you walk in the Word, the force of joy will be in your heart, working in your life. Amen. Amen. So we have to all, individually, I can't do it for you. You cannot do it for me. I can't even do it for my husband or my kids. You have to, it's a choice that you make, and you choose to be happy. Amen. And we can do this, church, because listen, 
I'm going to tell you what, the enemy is trying to put this on all of us, in our homes, in our relationship, and in our church. And I'm going to tell you what, I'm not going to allow it in Jesus' name. If there's anything I can do, and I can, I can stand out the word and preach the word. And if just two of us will agree, and I'm in agreement, it's touching anything, it's done by our Father in heaven. And we need to agree and protect. We need to agree and protect our life and our family's life, amen, and our church, you know, family. Because a lot of people, they just go wild with that. I'm going to tell you what Brother Hagen said this. Now this is a powerful statement. It is a staggering statement, but it's a true statement. He said, I would have Brother have a drug dealer in my church than a gossip. Yeah. Now I'm going to tell you what, that, when I heard him say that, I was like, ah. Oh. But it's true. Because a little leaven swirls a whole lump. And if you get somebody that's, you know, offended and lets that thing fester, and listen, I've been guilty of it before. So don't be sitting there thinking, you know, but we've all been guilty of it before. But you've got to be aware of that, and you better get that thing right out, right then. And I, you know, I've said this before, you know, immediately you need to not receive that. Don't receive it. You know, I've had people say things that hurt me. People are going to say things that hurt you. Amen? Intentionally and unintentionally. But like Pastor Casey said a long time ago, he said, you got to be greasy. Like a duck. You know how a duck is outside and it rains and it rains, it doesn't penetrate because he's got that film on him. When the rain comes down, it penetrates and it rolls off. And Pastor Casey says, you got to be greasy with the Holy Ghost. So that when things come, that you, they, don't, they don't even affect you. And when you get so filled up with Jesus, when you get so filled up with Jesus and so in love with him and so intent on, like Jeremiah preached on um, Sunday night, about making that decision that you're going to be on one path. And when, when the enemy tries to get you an offense, even through things that other people said, you know, and they might not have intended a bad way, but the enemy will say, oh, well, you know what they meant. You know what they meant. You know how they meant that. You just say, shut up, devil, you're a liar. And I forgive it right now, whether they meant it or not, because I choose to walk in love. I choose to walk in the anointing, because see, the enemy is ultimately after your anointing in your life. The anointing to do what God has called you to do in life. What God has called you to do, he's anointed you to do and he's equipped you to do. Yeah. Amen. And the word of God instructs us what to do. We don't have to live in strife. Yeah. Amen. And if you want this bad enough, you can have it. I want it. I want it more than anything else. I want it bad enough to where I'm going to keep my big mouth shut. <laughs> In Jesus' name, with the help of the Holy Spirit, who's on the inside of me to help me. He's our helper. He's our life. Um, he's our lead and our guide. Amen. And he will help you. You need to think before you speak. And be quick to forgive people. Amen. Where there is contention and strife, the Holy Spirit is grieved. And as a gentle dove, he simply withdraws the blessing and direction of the Lord. We need the direction of the Lord. And when you get in strife, you, you can't hear him. There's confusion. There's every evil word, church. Confusion and dissension result as God begins to lift his blessing from our efforts, removing his flow of grace and resources. Sometimes it may even be the betrayal of a brother or sister in Christ that tests our willingness to forgive. Amen. Say it's only a test. It's only a test. But to find God's release, we must be forgiving and find the releasing dynamic of his power and provision in our life, service, and ministry. We must be forgiving of even the most unkind or unfair assault even by those who call brother. And that's found in Mark 11, 25. We must allow the peace of God to rule in our heart, in our hearts, peace that mandates we seek the unity of the Holy Spirit. Amen? Amen. Praise
praise the Lord. Well, I got a prayer here that I want us to pray together. And I hope, Layla, that you can put that out there on our on our page so that um, people can that weren't here tonight, I just feel it's so important. I think it's just vitally important right now that we get this because of the way the Holy Spirit, you know, I was seeking Him on some things and it's like that illumination came. And He spoke one word to me when He woke me up and it was strife. So, um, some of the things we've been feeling um, in our homes, at work, and even in the church has been a spirit of strife that's trying to get in. And we have power and authority over all the power of the enemy. Yes. Amen. So if you're willing to stand with us, amen, tonight, praise God, stand at your feet, and we're going to pray this prayer together. God knows our heart. Amen. Lord. Thank God for His Word that instructs us, that, that brings light and it brings correction. Amen. We're going to live peaceable lives. We're going to have awesome marriages. Awesome marriages and relationships. And God's getting some of you that are single, He's getting you ready so that when you do find that right person, you're going to be able to be right. Woo! Amen. You can bring this into your job. Amen. And into your home, into your church, into your family, wherever you go. Well, let's just repeat this together and mean it from our heart. In Jesus' name, I refuse to allow strife in my life any longer. Holy Spirit, help me. in my 